So, yes, we are a bunch of Curiosity fanboys and girls here at SciShow. We make no secret of that. If Curiosity went on tour, we'd be in the front row throwing our undergarments at it. And why not? It's a nuclear-powered mobile laboratory on the surface of another planet the size of a small car. Harry Styles ain't got nothing on that. And just in time for the holiday season, Curiosity has just gifted the world another sleigh load of space data. There is now mounting evidence that ancient Mars was pretty darn habitable over larger areas and longer periods of time than we ever thought. Stick around to learn why. I'm Hank Green, and welcome to this special breaking edition of SciShow News. The Curiosity rover, aka the Mars Science Laboratory, landed on Mars in August of 2012. Part of its mission is to find evidence of past life, and since then we've been giving you updates about its findings. Now, it's been a few months, but researchers working with Curiosity presented a truckload of data today at the American Geophysical Union's fall meeting in San Francisco, California. Since we last checked with Curiosity, it steered off its planned course toward Mount Sharp to investigate some curious-looking formations, including what looked like an alluvial fan, a deposit that formed forms at lake inlets in a five-meter-deep trench called Yellowknife Bay. When it arrived at the deposit, Curiosity captured images of what appeared to be layers of fine-grained sedimentary rock. Mission scientists explained today that this kind of rock forms out of sediments that have settled to the bottom of a body of water. So Curiosity drilled through the bottom layer, deemed sheep bed, and with its Kemen instrument, used x-rays to determine the formation's basic chemical makeup. Sure enough, it's mudstone, a sedimentary rock that forms in water. Now, Curiosity's previous sample, Rock Nest, was also mudstone. What's new here is that everything we've learned so far indicates that Gale Crater, the massive crater that Curiosity has been roving since it landed a year and a half ago, was itself actually an ancient lake. And not only that, Gale Crater was a very habitable lake. Kemen determined that the two samples taken from sheep bed, known as John Klein and Cumberland, are rich in carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and sulfur, all elements that are key ingredients to life and that can be used as energy sources for that life. And while Curiosity didn't detect phosphorus or nitrogen, two of the most important elements for life, it did detect compounds that form in the presence of phosphorus and nitrogen. Kemen also detected a slew of compounds like orthogenic magnetite that only form in environments of neutral pH and low salinity, that is, environments that are friendly to life as we know it here on Earth. All of this reinforces previous findings from the rock nest sample. So it now seems Gale Crater was a big lake with water so nice you could drink it. On top of that vacation resort image, it seems the lake had been there for a really long time, which is a good attribute if you're trying to, like, live and evolve in it. Mission specialists used Kemen to measure the levels of various isotopes in the rock nest sample to determine the amount of weathering that it had undergone. They estimated that it formed about 4.1 million years ago. Well, the results were the same for John Klein and Cumberland, suggesting that the whole area was covered with water at that time. And geologists studied photos of yellow Knife Bay and sheep bed and found a complex layering of features like nodules and ridges, suggesting that Gale Crater had a long, complex affair with water. So they think that the lake lasted for tens of thousands and possibly hundreds of thousands of years. So given all that time and a large lake rich in mineral energy, what kind of life could have materialized? Chemolithotrophs are simple organisms that derive their energy from mineral compounds. Sounds a little bit weird maybe, but on Earth these extremophiles can be found in lots of places. They tend to do especially well in unspeakably hot or dark places like caves and thermal vents where no other organisms dare to dwell. So even though they're there's still no sign of life past or present on Mars, and I want to be clear about that. The new results from Gale Crater add to evidence that Mars could once have hosted something like them. With each new result, it seems like signs of past habitability are being found across bigger and bigger areas and longer stretches of time. Which means that with each new result, we get closer to that last remaining step of actually finding signs of past life on Mars. I'm holding out hope, curiosity. Think you could do it. Thank you for watching this special update from SciShow News and a big extra helping of thanks to our subscribers on Subbable, without whom you would not be watching this. Would you like us to tweet a picture from our studio to you or add a custom message to our doobly-doo? To learn more about these and other exclusive perks, go to Subbable.com. If you have an idea for a topic you'd like us to cover or a question or comment, leave it for us in the comments below. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter and go to YouTube.com slash SciShow and subscribe.